first step is to move the robot by hand to an approximate home position and then turn the key to the cold start position and then switch on the controller. Next you run Robwin on the computer which brings up a window which is called the communications window. In this window you can type any command that you want. All commands are sent to the controller. The controller has in it what's called a dictionary and the command you type is looked up in the dictionary and its meaning is executed. All commands that you type in this communications window must be in uppercase. The first command you want to type is Robofort. The next command is Start. And then the next command is Calibrate. It calibrates the robot to internal sensors. turns it to home position. In the case of an R17, you have to type home to make it go to the home position. Once it's in home, you can then start moving it using the teach pad. The uh, easiest and simplest way to move it is using the teach pad. You click the T button on the screen. And the teach pad is then operative. To work that, you do uh, you select a joint. For example, if I select J1, that is the waist, plus and hold, and it will keep rotating until I take my finger off. Likewise with the shoulder, which is J2, or the elbow, J3, Just keep holding it until it gets to where I want it. If I take my finger off, it stops. J4 is pitch. And J5 is rotate. So the gripper now rotates. If you want to operate the gripper, you can press the grip button and then plus to close it and minus to open it. And then if you press the home button, it goes back to home. To get out of teach mode, you click the escape button up here or press escape on the keyboard. And now we are ready to type commands again. A very useful command to type is ready. So if I type ready, the robot will move to a very convenient position. And it's also at this point now in what's called Cartesian mode, so that it knows where it is in X, Y, Z, stroke, Z uh, positions. So if I type where on the screen, that shows me where the robot now is. The next thing you can do is you can hit the J button, which is job. Now the same keys on the teach pad mean different things. Now I can move down on Z by pressing J3. Z or J3Z and then minus and it moves down by 10 millimeters each time I press the minus or up by 10 millimeters each time I press the plus or I can press J1 which is X and it will move in the X direction by 10 millimeters or the Y direction by 10 millimeters uh, pitch is 10 degrees plus or minus and J5 is W, which is roll, and it rolls. J6, of course, is for the six-axis version, and this is the five-axis robot. This fixed increment of 10 millimeters shows on the screen as 100 units, and one unit is 0.1 of a millimeter, and you can change this by clicking new increment and then typing in a new increment, for example, 25 millimeters. Now back onto the teach pad again, now all the increments are 25 millimeters. So back on the screen, I'm going to exit this by pressing escape. And I'm now going to type ready again. 
and then the robot goes back to this convenient ready position. There's nothing magical about this position, it's just a nice place to start everything. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new project. So on the screen I'm going to go top project, new, and I'm going to call this um, how one, click save, and we now have three more windows. There's an Ed2 window which I'm going to leave for another time. And then there is a, a window called places and a window called routes. Looking at places first, I'll highlight that. Now I'm going to go back to job by pressing the J button. I'm just going to move the robot just a little bit, not a lot. Uh, let's see, Z minus. Uh, y plus, and wherever the robot is, you can name that position. So going back to the screen, I click escape to get out of job mode. In the places window, I click add new, and then put a name, I will call it CAM1. You can call it any name you want, you can choose your own name for any places. And I'm just going to call this one CAM1, and click OK. So I've now got a place called CAM1. Okay, now if I type ready, the robot goes back to ready. If I type CAM1, it goes back to CAM1. The other thing you can do is you can create a route. So now in Roots, I will click New, and I'm going to just call this uh, Wave, all right? It doesn't do anything, it's just to show you how they're constructed. Press Enter for that. I'm sorry, I created that in the wrong mode. I want to create this in Cartesian mode, so I will close that, delete it, click New Route, click Cartesian, and then the name of the group I'm going to call Wave. And the route is now ready to accept coordinates. Okay, to learn positions into the route, I'm going to hit the J button again. To set at 10 millimeter increments, I'll make them bigger, I'll make them 25 millimeters again. Now, to learn a position, I just press the tip button. Now I can move the robot, let's say in the X direction. And press the tip button for that position. And then let's say go up. Press the tick for that position, and each time I press the tick, it's learning another position into the root. Let's go back here a little bit, and tick that, and then uh, I'll go back on X again. Maybe a bit of pitch in there. And learn that. And then finally on the screen, I will press escape. I'm going to click line one and click go to. So the robot goes back to where it started. And I'm going to click append position, which adds that coordinate on the end. Now, if I go into the uh, command window, the communications window, and type run, this is what you see. It repeats the positions that it learned. Uh, the drawback is that's in what's called segmented mode. To get it to run through the whole thing smoothly, you type the word smooth. Now if I type run, you get this. So what happens if we stall this robot? 
if we get in its way. I'll first of all send it to home. Now I'm going to type ready, which brings it back down here, onto my hand. Okay, as you see, the motors came out of synchronism. They're ge not generating any more torque. There's no more force on my, my hand. And on the screen we have encoder step and mismatch axis 3. In other words, this axis stalled, but the others didn't. What to do about it? The first thing you type is D hyphen energize to switch it off. Now you can physically put it back at the right home position. And then you start right from the beginning with start and calibrate. 